Now we're on green. All right. Um, so now I'll pound this. Yes, sir. I'll call to order the meeting of the Finance and Auditing Committee of the Board of Directors of the Golden Gate Bridge Highway and Transportation District of 27th April 2023. It is 1026 a.m. Madam Secretary, would you please call the roll? Thank you. Good morning again, everyone. Director Cochran. Here. Director Giudice. Here. Director Grosball. He's absent. Director Hernandez. Stepped out for just a second. Yeah. Director Radoni. Present. Vice Chair Parr is absent. Chair Rabb is absent. And President Terrio. Here. There we go. And oh, Director Hernandez is back, <laughs> back. So we have a quorum. Very good. And then also in the room, we have a Director Fear and Director Hill. So we are not a committee of the whole, but. Uh, and Director Garbarino. So we're not a committee of the whole. But uh, I will I will happily accept comment uh, and questions from the um, the non members of the committee who are present. Um, the um, first item on the agenda uh, is ratification of previous actions by the auditor controller. Uh, it's on pages five to twenty four of your packet, and for this we have uh, Wally Kajapaya uh, from PFM here to present to us, Mr. Kajapaya. The name, am I? Kajo Pai. Kajo Pai. No worry. No one gets it right the first time. Okay. No worry. All right. Good morning, everyone. Um, this is the monthly report um, from PFM for the month of March, um, which starts on page ten of the packet. So if we look at the yield curve um, for the month of March, I think the theme there that we saw for at least for the almost for the whole first quarter um, of this year, is lots of recent volatility on the shorter end of the curve, especially in the two-year yield. Um, we can see that the two-year yield got up to about over 5% um, and then came moving down um, to about 4.03 by the end of the month. But um, you can see during the month, there was a lot of big moves, bigger moves that we typically see in fixed incomes on a day-to-day -day basis um, in that last half um, of the quarter. We also look at the yield curve, um, still inverted, uh, but when we look at where its positioning is, you can see that there was a drop in yield um, from the green dotted line at the end of February to where the blue solid line is at the end of March. Um, most of the, uh, the big drops that we saw were in the two-year, the three-year, and the five-year yield. The good thing is if yields have dropped, um, that does bode well for performance moving forward. Um, and we've done a pretty good job of locking in some good yields on the longer end of the curve um, over the last um, couple of months. Page 11, we look at the Fed funds rate. Um, we're right at about 5%. Um, we got a 25 basis point rate hike in the last meeting. Um, did not have a meeting in April, but next month in May, we are expecting another 25 basis point rate hike. So we can see that the pace of the rate hikes that we've seen over the last month has started to slow down. And the Fed has started to signal that this could be an area where they actually pause and hold rates moving forward. That takes us to the next chart um, on page 12. And you can see most of the committee members are in favor of holding rates above 5% um, without having any anticipation of potential rate cuts until we get to about 2024. Some of the bigger items are the highlights from the last Fed meeting on March 22nd. Again, inflation remains elevated, um, but it is moving at a pace that is starting that has come off the peak, um, which is one of the reasons why the Fed is looking at potentially holding rates at that 5.25% area. Um, the banking system, even though we saw some collapses of some um, some of the regional banks, um, the Fed says that the banking system does remain resilient, and a lot of the um, things that we did see is not a broader issue, but more so isolated incidents for some bad decisions that were made by those banks. Um, again, they are affirming that they want to get um, their inflation target to about 2% over time, which is one of the reasons why um, it is um, a high probability that we're going to see rates um, hold near that 5% range, possibly until the end of the year. Now, the implied Fed funds future rates. Um, or what the market is pricing in where rates should be, the market is still pricing in potential rate cuts. So if you look at the lighter orange line and the darker orange line 
back where we looked, we saw the um, the lighter orange line was where the, the Fed fund future rates was implying um, of higher interest rates moving forward. But then when we look at where we were at April 3rd, we can see that the Fed fund future rate starts to imply lower rates with potential rate cuts. So again, there is a disconnect between what the Fed has been signaling and what the market is pricing in. So we'll have to see what happens with that story. Consumer sentiment um, obviously started to take a you know a leg down in March. Um, again, a lot of that having to do what we saw with the banking system. Um, and then we can also see that the inflation expectations are starting to come down um, now that we've sort of come off the peaks um, that we saw last year. Moving forward, um, we were able to make some purchases in the portfolios with very, very attractive yields. So again, um, with the highest being at 5.82% and the lowest um, being at 4.56%. Uh, there also were some sales this year um, or this month of U.S. Treasury notes and some commercial paper as well. So moving forward, I think, you know, from a performance standpoint, performance continues to be strong, again, because rates are not moving as aggressively as we saw this year, and we're getting to a point where we could be at the peak of where interest rates are, um, and we've locked in some attractive yields, income remains strong in the portfolio, um, and we probably won't see the big gyrations we saw with the unrealized gains and losses moving forward. So um, we'll see what happens with the next Fed meeting next month, and then we will present our findings in the next report. Thank you. Uh, are there directors with questions or comments for Mr. Kajapai? Seeing none, Madam Secretary, do we have any public comment? I do not have any speakers in the room. Uh, Justine, do you have any speakers under item number three? We have no speakers for item three, thank you. Thank you. And the next thing would be to look for a motion to approve the ratification of previous actions mm -hmm. by the Auditor Controller. There's a motion. Is there a second? Second. And there is a second. Uh, on the motion, Madam Secretary. Thank you. We have a first and second for item number three, starting with Director Cochran. Yes. Director Judice. Yes. Director Grosbo is absent. Director Hernandez. Aye. Director Rodoni. Yes. Vice Chair Parr is absent. Chair Rabbit is absent. And President Terrio. Yes. Thank you. You have five eyes. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is uh, going back to an item that was uh, at building and operating. And, and uh, thank you, uh, Chair Garbarino. Um, budget increase in the fiscal year 22-23 bridge division capital budget project for pro budget for project number 1722 toll plaza pavement overlay. Um, uh, Ms. Uh, Bauer Furbush, uh, I think it's your turn to present us. So with regard to this item, I, I, I'm just going to focus on the budget increase. And um, as, as you know, uh, the project's been um, in work for quite a while. Um, and uh, because along the way, uh, as you probably know, there were real price fluctuations in the market, construction market. So we need uh, an addition amount of money to finance the project right now. And uh, the increase that the staff is requesting is $627,389 um, for the total project budget of $4,127,389. Additional questions or comments for Ms. Bauer for a bush on this item? Again, I see none. Madam uh, Secretary, uh, public comment, is there any? We have no public comment on this item. Justine, is that correct? We have no public comments on the line as well? That is correct. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. We have no public comment. Then uh, let us proceed to a roll call vote. A motion. Oh, uh, pardon me. <laughs> there's a motion. And there's right there, there's a motion. And is there a second? second. There's a second. <laughs> Getting ahead of myself. <laughs> Thank you. We have first and second voting on item 4A, starting with Director Cochran. Yes. Director Giudice? Yes. Director Grosbal is absent. Director Hernandez? Aye. Director Rodoni? Yes. Thank you. Vice Chair Parr is absent. Chair Rabbit is absent. And President Terrio? Yes. Thank you. That's five eyes. Thank you. 
Um, give me one moment here. Yeah, my computer behaves, it's my laptop, my uh, iPad behaves itself. It's not, um, uh, there, there is no uh, action um, related to grant programs on the agenda. Uh, so I guess we move along to item six, is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Uh, so item six is authorized execution of an extension to the commercial paper line of credit agreement with J.P. Morgan Chase Bank. And for that, we have Auditor Controller Joe Lyon. Thank you very much. I hope I didn't ruin this. There. Okay, we're here to um, approve the authors authorization extension of the uh, line of credit agreement for our commercial paper program. Uh, it helps to have a little bit of history for this program to understand what we're doing here. Uh, in the year 2000, the district put together a uh, short-term debt program called a commercial paper program, and in order to raise $61 million to invest in the first phase of the seismic retro project of the Golden Gate Bridge, so a, a, a worthy cause. And uh, since that time, the district has maintained that uh, commercial paper program uh, in order to, with the idea that when it finished the seismic retrofit of the Golden Gate Bridge, which is, has been extended, but when it finished it, it would then pay off this principal. In the meantime, it was just paying off the interest of this commercial paper program. Uh, in order to have a commercial paper program, there is a, a significant amount of legal work that goes behind that. One of them is called the indenture of the program, and it requires the district to have a line of credit to pay its uh, debt holders. That means the people that hold the commercial paper, for some reason, the district couldn't. So the bank would step in, and they would pay off the person or the holder of the debt if the district, for some reason, couldn't do it. So we have uh, renewed this, and the board has renewed this uh, policy. Uh, a number of times there is a, on the third page of the report, you can see a, a, a list of all the times it's been renewed. Uh, we are working with uh, J.P. Morgan, uh, one of the more established banks in uh, the United States and also in this particular business. Uh, each year we uh, have our financial advisor, uh, in this case from public financial management, uh, meet with us and with the uh, banking officials. Uh, we negotiate an extension. Uh, this particular extension was uh, negotiated at uh, 43 basis points uh, for the amount of approximately $333,000 a year, or, or for a two-year term, it's going to be $666,000. That is the lowest rate we've had, uh, ties the lowest rate we've had in the last 15 years for this uh, particular instrument. Uh, we uh, would uh, chose a two-year term, and we we're recommending a two-year term to the board because uh, this program uh, will be in place until we uh, finalize the, at least until we finalize total, the, the final funding for the last and remaining phase of the uh, program, the retrofit of the bridge, and that's not expected to be completed for another several years. So we will need this program until then. And if there are any other questions, I'm happy to take them. Justine, we have no public commenters in the room for this item, so we're looking to see if there's any public comment for item number um, six in the, in the public room. There are no public comments for this item. Thank you. Justine, do we have anyone on the on the line? Um, I, yeah, I'll repeat it. There are no public comments for this item. Thank Great, you. thank you. This time I'll remember. Is there a motion to approve the uh, execution of an extension of the commercial paper line of credit, et cetera, et cetera? So move, motion and a second. Okay. Um, then, Madam Secretary, we can do a roll call vote. Great, thank you. We have first and second item number six, starting with Director Cochran. Yes. Director Judice? Yes. Director Grossball's absent. Director Hernandez? Aye. Director Rodoni? Aye. Vice Chair Parr? Absent. Chair Rabbit's absent. President Terrio? Yes. Thank you. You have five eyes. And Mr. Warr, you've wisely, wisely stayed right where you were. Um, for the next item is the annual review of the district's 457B deferred compensation on 401A defined contribution program. 
And that's yours too, so please go ahead. Uh, thank you very much, thank you very much. Uh, to the committee. This is, a, as, a, as mentioned, the annual report. It's uh, for your uh, review. It is a part of our due diligence in running these particular uh, programs for the benefit of our uh, employees here at the district. The 457 program is an optional employee deferred contribution plan where employees choose to put uh, funds, their own funds, into these programs uh, at a, in a tax free uh, upfront, and then they would pay their taxes when they withdraw them after their retirement. It is an intended. Uh, for their benefit. It, this 457 plan creates about 99% of all of the assets that are discussed in this report. The 401A plan is a very small plan, and we'll get that, I'll get to that at the end. Um, the 457 plan, uh, the purpose of this report is to discuss the performance of the plan and to inform the board if you have any, if we had any changes that would need to be made to the administration of this particular plan, and there were uh, no uh, changes to either of the 457 plan or the 418 plan. And as far as the performance, uh, they are directly related. The two plans use the exact same uh, uh, funding funds, investment strategy funds, uh, so that if we talk about the performance for one, we're really talking about performance uh, for both. Uh, the district has uh, hired a um, investment advisor and a third party uh, provider to run these particular programs. Uh, the third party provider is Mission Square. They have been under that name and, and a uh, previous name uh, running these programs uh, for 20 plus years here at the district. The, um, uh, and, they, and, the, and our investment advisor we've had for the last uh, 15 years. What we meet with them, uh, the plan provider uh, quarterly and the investment advisor uh, at least twice a year. And uh, they they work together with us as a team in order to make sure that these uh, plans have the best performance options for our employees at the lowest cost. Uh, this particular year, we have replaced, and they were discussed in detail in the attached charts, uh, three of the investment options for our employees to improve their performance, and also in this case, actually, to reduce the, the cost. The overall cost of the plan um, to our employees was reduced uh, by about 10% from uh, uh, down to about 32 basis points, and that's uh, like 32 cents on every hundred dollars that our employees have invested in these plans, and that's probably a third of what you might find in a normal set of plans like this out in the in the market if, if our employees were going out into market to look for this type of uh, of service. The um, there, there, as I mentioned, there there that detail more on cost is in the uh, in the attached place these attached attachments to this particular board item. And with that, I'll open it up to any uh, questions. Are there questions uh, or comments from the directors for Mr. Wire on this item? I'm seeing <laughs> shaking of head and shaking of heads and nothing else. Okay. Uh, so this is uh, not an action item, uh, but there is room for public comment. Do we have any? We have no speakers in the room. <laughs> Justine, do you have any speakers for item number seven? No one for item seven. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And so, again, uh, Mr. Wire, we are back to you for the next item. Receive the independent auditor's engagement letter for the annual financial audit and single audit for the year ending June 30th, 2023, as submitted by Aid Bailey, by Aid Bailey LLP. Yes, uh, thank you. To the committee. Okay, what was that? I'll try, I'll try again. again. Oh, good. Okay. Um, thank, um, you. thank you. And to the, to the uh, committee, this is, this is the, the a yearly engagement letter of our annual audit. Uh, the board has hired, I think we renewed the agreement about uh, a year ago, uh, to provide these annual audits. Uh, they audit the district's finances, and their report is included in our annual report, which comes to the board in November. So you will see uh, the audit team, or the leader of our audit team here in November, presenting his uh, and his team's audit uh, to the full board. Uh, the audit team uh, is actually working with our staff as we speak. Uh, they come in in April, then they come back uh, one week in July, again in August to wrap up the audit, and then we put it all the all the work together and get it to you guys uh, in November. Uh, the, the, this particular letter lays out what uh, the audit team. Uh, the auditor will do what they will not do, and then what they require uh, the management team to do. Uh, and it's, uh, as in my years in the business, has gotten longer and longer and longer and longer as auditors have found themselves in trouble. 
Um, so it's quite long now, but that's really all it says, and it's pretty detailed about what it tells us to do. There are not significant uh, changes from the previous year about the requirements for either themselves, what they will, will not do, and what we are supposed to do. And if there are any questions, I'm happy to answer them or get the order here and they can answer them. Are there questions for Mr. Wire on this item? Um, seeing none, I have one. Um, in, in the last paragraph of the first page, if you can bring that up, the first two sentences simply do not scan. Uh, I don't know what they mean. Uh, accounting principles generally accepted in the United States of America as promulgated by the Government Accounting Standards Board require that identify the included supplementary information, such as management discussion, analysis, and budgetary comparison information be presented to supplement the basic financial statements. Okay, uh, that, that doesn't scan for me. Uh, you know, it goes astray with uh, at, at identify. Um, the next one is such information, uh, although not a part of the basic financial statements, is required by identify designated accounting standard setters, such as the Governmental Accounting Standards Board, who considers it to be an essential part of financial reporting for placing the, base, for placing the basic financial statements in appropriate operational, economic, or historical context. Again, it goes astray at identify. Something is missing in there. Uh, and I, I, I'm, I'm sure you, you may know off, you might know off the top of your head what it is. Uh, and if we could have that, spell that to us here, it would be very useful for us. If not, um, we will count on you, I think, to make sure it ends up in there. I would, I would rather, rather take this back and have them, them explain, explain it to us. Sure, we, is it, would it be all right then to hold off? I, on this? It is perfectly fine to hold off. They, they, as I, I said, they, 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 this, this is just part, part of the, the uh, actually, actually, this is part of one of their requirements, requirements that, that we bring, bring this letter to you now, now and, and not, not at the, at the, at the end, end, you know, when, they're, when, they're, when they come with the audit, that they want to have it up front. So I would be happy to take it back and say, why don't you give this a little more in English so we can discuss what it is. Yeah, somebody did a late night cut and paste job. I think so too. Yes. Um, <laughs> all right. Um, so um, I, I will actually take public comment, but I, I'm, the motion I will look for will not be to approve, of, and I'll suggest a motion in a moment. So is there a public comment? We have no public comments, and I believe, Justine, do we have any public comments on this item for item number eight? We do not. Justine, if you can hear me, I would like to speak. Oh. Uh, Director Parr has a public comment, and I finally got it so I could uh, do it. I, uh, in my history, or in my memory, um, it seems that every so often it's prudent to change accounting firms. Um, this particular contract, and I know we're not, you're not going to vote on it today, but this particular one is five years, and I know that Ide Bailey has been with us, I would assume, at least three years. Um, would you comment on that? I'm not pushing to change. I'm just wanting to make sure that we do what's prudent with the accounting firm, and I'll get offline. Thank you. Yes. The, okay. Okay. Uh, thank you. The, 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 you are absolutely right. And the board did have a conversation about whether or not to continue with I Bailey. And their contract was renewed, um, la I think it's last year, if I'm not mistaken. And the board did discuss that. And um, both. Uh, we had uh, we went we went through the requirements of GASB and what they require is that you can continue with the same firm um, and what the practice the established practice that GASB has put out for this firm to do is they have to switch around the partners and the way these firms work the the uh, a partner handles your particular case with the team and then they uh, they go through the whole thing, and then they have peer review within their their firm. And so, in this case, what you do is they switch the they switch the partner lead, and they and they often switch team members. And they it's like it's for them and for Gatsby, it's like adding uh, another voice. So that's what uh, the district uh, decided to do when we uh, um, renewed their particular contract. So we still have several more years on this particular contract. This uh, item in front of you today is just the engagement letter for this year's audit and not renewing or not renewing their, uh, not a decision to renew their particular contract at this time. Um, they, do, they do switch partners. Uh, we have made sure they do that from at least from staff's perspective. And I think it's absolutely, 
when they come in, or I could have them come in sooner if you guys actually want to have a discussion with them about what they do and how they do it, and so you're comfortable with what, what the steps that they take. That's all we have for public comment. That's it. That's all we have for public comment on this item. Okay. What I would be looking for is a motion to continue consideration of this item to the next meeting of the Finance and Auditing Committee in May. So moved. There's a motion. Second. And there's a second. Uh, on the motion, uh, Madam Secretary, a roll call vote, please. Thank you. We're going to move to continue item number eight to receive the independent auditor's okay. engagement letter, um, starting with Director Cochran. Yes. Director Giudice. Yes. Director Grossball is absent. Director Hernandez. Aye. Dr. Rodoni. Aye. Vice Chair Poir is absent. Chair Rabbit is absent. And President Terrio. Yes. Thank you. You have five eyes to continue this item. And, and you're going to hang there for a while, it looks like, Mr. Moore. Look at it in my little uh, list of things to do here. Um, so the next item is status report on the fiscal year 2022-23 budget on pages 59 to 67 of your packet. Uh, Mr. Wire, yours again. Thank you. Yes, this is the uh, annual report that we've been, I mean, the monthly report we've been giving you since the pandemic started uh, in order to address the fact that our uh, budget that we pass that we ask you to pass, staff ask you to pass uh, at the beginning of the year has such a large deficit. Um, the, the, this report is uh, a very similar to the one you've seen before. It's just been updated for the actual returns uh, from bus and ferry and the bridge as far as traffic and ridership is concerned and the revenues that have come because of that. Um, but the, the bottom line is the budget is balanced and it is balanced through the use of federal one-time funding and that's what is shown on the uh, table on the third page of this report, and then the uh, detailed uh, attachment graphs and tables show the revenue, the amount of revenue that was earned. And if there are any questions on that, I'm happy to answer them. Thanks for Mr. Dwyer on this particular item. There are not, this is not an action item, so Mr. Dwyer, on to the next action item. Hang on a second. Okay, we next do, item. Oh, public comment. We do have public comment Public comment, comment on this we still have to do, yes. Justine, we don't have anyone in the room, but can you introduce uh, Mr. Pilpel? Certainly. Certainly. David, please go ahead. Uh, David Pilpel again. So on this item, I, I feel like I'll just bring out my broken record. My uh, calculated fiscal cliff date is now March 19th, 2024 or later. Um, time is still very much of the essence. I look forward to hearing item 10A, the Strategic Planning Advisory Subcommittee reports item uh, at tomorrow's board meeting. Um, I assume that next year's budget planning is well underway um, with the continued uncertainty, more on that in the future. And I just would uh, note from the recovery rates from the reports, it appears that the uh, bridge uh, traffic and, and tolls uh, recovery is um, kind of at the 80% level, which is uh, good. Um, you know, I mean, it's just good, period. Um, but that the bus and ferry uh, recovery rate is still in the 40% um, range and doesn't seem to be getting that much better. So perhaps in both cases, that's sort of the, the new normal and is very much tied to uh, downtown San Francisco office occupancy, as we well know. So uh, those are my thoughts on the budget status report. And thanks for listening. Thank you, Mr. Pilpel. Sorry for almost skipping past you. Madam Secretary, is there anyone else? I almost skipped past. No, we have no other comment. Actually. Then we can move along, uh, Mr. Wire, to the next item. Uh, monthly review of Golden Gate Bridge traffic tolls and bus and ferry transit patronage fares for nine months ending March 2023. Thank you. If I could have you turn to page 71, which is third third uh, page, page in this, in this uh, item, item to the, to the table, table that we, that we look, at look at each time. Um, this is, uh, the, so this is three quarters of the year, three months. We've gone through three months. You see the, the data here for bridge, bus, and ferry. The data on the left is the actual ridership. Data on the right is the revenue in those boxes. And I'll just take a look at the bold lines at the bottom of each box uh, really quickly to because I think it helps uh, a little bit follow up on what, this, what the speaker mentioned. Um, so bridge, rev, bridge, we are, if, on the, if you look on the left side, that bottom uh, toll, bottom bold line in that box. Um, the two numbers to the right uh, of that, uh, that box are the 2% and zero. And what that means is actual to actual, we're 2% more bridge traffic this year than last year through nine months. And that's, that's good. It's gone up a little bit, but that's not rebounding from a pandemic. It's just gone up a little bit. And then from budget, it's, it's approximately what we expected it to happen. So it's, it's on budget. The revenues, which are in the same line, but over in the box to the right, um, the, 
those last numbers are 11% and 5%. That means the revenues are up a little larger than than what we expect from last year, by 11%, and um, a little bit over what we expect in a budget. And what we're seeing is um, the um, we're seeing the violation revenue up a little bit because of uh, it was dampened during the uh, pandemic when a number of those uh, violations were uh, slowed down in their process to give people more time. So they're just coming in later. Um, but that's so that's we expect that to be a, a, a temporary bump up. So, but it, but as as mentioned, it's good news uh, in that sense. Then in the second set of boxes down bus. Uh, the, the left box is the ridership again, and it's up about about a third. If you look at that same bold line over last year, so we're a third, and that is very good. And uh, it's about what we budgeted. Our revenues up are slightly um, larger than that. And um, the conventional wisdom there is that we are seeing a return of, of some of the higher paying ferry customers than we had the previous year. That means a few more commute customers than we used to have. Uh, it's not rebounding greatly, but it's more than what we had a year ago. And so that puts revenue per passenger up a little higher. And then ferry on the bottom, uh, ferry revenues doubled from last year. If you look again in that bold line at the very bottom, the number is 98%, 112%. That essentially means doubled over what we had uh, last year, which is not a surprise. We've seen significant growth. We've been talking about that. And ferry revenue up is up almost as much, uh, almost doubled what it was the previous year. And that's it, it for this report. Do you want me to move on to the next report, or would you like to take it back? I see no one raising a vivid objection. Please go ahead. Okay. Uh, then the, 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 I'll just, first off, stop. Sorry, momentarily stop at the, uh, the just what my staff call the spaghetti graphs. They're right below the. Uh, they're on page starting on page seventy-three. Just to to point out that this is where you can see the comparison with the. Uh, uh, previous year's uh, traffic. Uh, if you look at the first bridge traffic, you can see that our, our the, the purple line, which is the this year, is just slightly on the um, uh, right on top, almost right on top of the gold line from last year, and that's what what you would expect when when you've had such a small increase. Uh, bus and ferries, you see their their graphs farther down. You can see their their purple line is slightly higher uh, than than the previous year, where you can see the growth that they've had. But anyway, turning to the next uh, item. That on, starts on page 79, and now the, the district's finances. It's a financial review for nine months, so page 79. And there's a table right in the center of the page, and we'll just address that table. The importance there is uh, that if you look at the bold uh, lines in the middle of that table, uh, they summarize where our revenues expand expenses are through nine months. So this, again, page 79. Um, the first bold line is the district operating revenue, and there's you have three uh, numbers to the right. 125 million was what we had last year. We budgeted 138 million, and current revenues are in at 152 million, so significantly greater, about about, about 20, 27 million. Um, that is uh, extra toll revenue, extra bus and ferry revenue, uh, slightly better. Uh, Grant revenue, that means not, not this federal one-time funding grants. They're not included in that number, but the, uh, the grant revenue we get from SDA, uh, from PDA and SDA through our service to the counties of Marin and Sonoma. So that's up uh, by also. And our investment revenue is higher. Um, last year, we saw our, re our investment revenue reduced because of the uh, inverse relationship between uh, the value of bonds that we hold and the uh, interest rate. When interest rates fell, uh, when interest rates rose, our value of our bonds fell, and we had to recognize that. Uh, so that's reversed. So we've seen a, gr a significant increase in revenue. Uh, the next line down is the expense. And uh, prior year was 154, and we budgeted 190 uh, in order to bounce back with service if we needed to. We've only spent 164. So we've spent 10 million more than last year, but significantly less than we budgeted. Um, and then the result, if you compare the 152 in revenues to the 164 in expenses, we're, at, we're just under 12 million, 11.7, 11.8 million dollars uh, in a, a operating deficit. That's a very significant through nine months. Uh, last year, as you can see, it was 29 million. So this year it's 12. Last year it was 29. That's very good. Those are those are the uh, with 
in order to pay that, we'll be using the federal one-time money. And we'll be using less of it, and that means that more of it will slide into future years, which is good for all of our planning purposes. And we'll talk more about that in the coming months with the budget and, and the projections that come out in, in the summer uh, to do that. But it's a good sign. I don't expect it to stay at 12 million. You know, the, the last three months, uh, we, we tend to do, uh, make sure we get all our bills in. The expenses will probably rise a little bit more than that, but it, 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 it won't be uh, what it was last year. It'll be better than last year, and that's a, a very good sign. The attached tables to this report are um, all of the detailed line item tables, uh, both for the district as a whole and all the divisions. And if there's any questions on those, I'm happy to answer them. Fire on these. Again, I'm not seeing any. Um, I mean, you just keep, keep going. going. <laughs> Please, uh, item B, I think. It's okay. Uh, uh, hey, next, we turn to page 89. And that's the summary of your capital expenditures for the year through nine months. And just be really short, um, there we're averaging uh, our expenditures through nine months, which is three quarters of the year, is about 80%. So our expenditures are slightly higher than than the year. And you might expect this point, but you know, as I've mentioned each time, capital projects bunch up and they spend when they spend. In this particular case, it was the ferry dredging project that spent out over the summer. And so you know, it's good and we've paid it off, so we're a little bit ahead. Otherwise, things are going well and the attached reports uh, kind of talk about, they show you which division those expenditures have been made in. And if there's any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Otherwise, I will stop there. What's more, are there any questions for Mr. Warr? Again, I see none, Madam Secretary. Um, I think it's the moment to go back and see if we have any public comment on items 10, 11A, and 11B. Hi, Justine, just checking in. Are there any public comments for those items, items 10, 11A, and 11B? We have no public comment for those items, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, with that, Mr. Wire, you can go relax in your chair again. Um, we're on to uh, item 12, which is review of the district's fiscal year 22-23 third quarterly report of judgments for settled claims. Mr. Manolius. Thank you, President Ontario. Uh, your risk manager, Kelly Vitale, is not here this week, so I'll do this one. Uh, before you is a listing of all the settlements in this case, because there's no, no judgments in the workers' comp and general liability contexts. Uh, all the workers' comp uh, settlements include resolution of all future claims, as we've been telling you. Uh, and so if there are any questions on these, I'm happy to take them. Once again, are there any questions from Mr. Manolius on the set of, uh, of claims? I see none. Um, Madam Secretary, is there public comment on them? We have no public comments in the room. Justine, do you have any public comments on this item? We have no public comments on this item. Thank you. Thank you. Um, this is uh, not an action item. So uh, thank you, Mr. Manolius. And we can proceed along to the next item, which is review of the Auditor Controller's Fiscal Year 22-23 Third Quarterly Report on Authorized Budget Adjustments and Budget Transfers under the General Manager's Authority. Mr. Warr, your relaxation is over. Thank you. Uh, you have, uh, to the committee, you have properly summarized this report already, so I won't even repeat that. And if, if there are any questions on the uh, authorized budget adjustments and, and board transfers, there have been uh, very few, and there are, there are very some insignificant amount of budget compared to the entire budget of the district. But I'm happy to address them. They are listed in detail in the accompanying pages of the report. The auditor controller on this. I see none. Uh, and I, I, I'm going to say we can probably move along to the next one without public comment and bunch them up again if we need to. So um, then, Mr. Weyer, the review of the audit control is fiscal year 22-23 third quarterly report on procurement actions under the general manager's authority. Uh, yes, and uh, thank, thank you, Chief the Committee. These, these are, are the, the third quarter, quarter and there, there is a table that summarizes the years, uh, the first three quarters also in this report. Um, there are three pages of detail, and they represent those that fall under the uh, General Manager's authority, and I'm also happy to answer any questions on those that appear in the tables. I think it's pages, uh, where is it, 10, 109 to 111. If you have any questions on those, I'm happy to answer them. As well, comments from Mr. R. I see none. Um, Madam Secretary, uh, is there public comment on either item, uh, item 13 or item 14? Just checking back with you, just seeing we have no public comment in the room. Do you have any speakers for items uh, 12, 13, or 14? I have no public speakers. Thank you. Got it. 
These are not action items. Um, we can proceed along uh, to the next item, but uh, that item would uh, um, uh, normally be closed session. However, before we do that, I'd like to take another item out of order with the permission of the body. Uh, and that is uh, public comment uh, on items um, not on the agenda. Um, so can we do that now uh, if everybody's okay instead of uh, um, after closed session? Give the folks from the public a chance to go home uh, or get off the phone. It looks fine. So let's do that. All right. Justine, do you have any speakers under public comment? We have no one in the room. I have no speakers for public comment. Thank you. Got it. So that takes care of public comment too. Then um, let us uh, move on to uh, closed session. Thanks to everyone for their patience. Uh, we'll place the public on hold for the duration of our closed session item and return after closed session for adjournment. Uh, Attorney Kim Manolius will take us into closed session. Uh, so, Mr. Manolius, it's yours again. Thank you, President. At this time, the committee will go into closed session for conscious and legal counsel regarding the existing litigation of Government Code 549, 6.9a, for the matter on the agenda entitled Antoine Chapman versus PGB. Are we ready for closed session? We will be in a second. We'll make sure we do that. And then I'm making a copy to everyone to set the signal. Thank you. Yeah, here. Thank you for your patience, everyone. While we're in closed session, I'd like to remind you to please keep your own devices muted. Thanks so much. Yep. All good? Yep, we're good. Mr. Manolius, um, would you like to report on the closed session? Thank you, President Terrio. The committee met in closed session regarding the matter that is on the agenda and um, gave this negotiator appropriate guidance as to how to settle, how to handle the problem. Thank you, Mr. Manolius. Uh, there is nothing else on our agenda uh, except for a motion to adjourn. So there is a motion. Is there a second? Second. Uh, I'm going to look around, see if anybody's say, shaking their heads against this. No, we are adjourned.